Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for June 26th. Wednesday, we are back. It is hump day and we got a two slate day, but this breakdown will be for the main slate for the afternoon games. I think uh, it's a pretty fun spot to talk about and we do have six games on DraftKings, five on FanDuel. FanDuel does not have the second game of uh, Braves Cardinals double hit header like DraftKings does. So, as always, we will cover it all and give you the breakdowns. What we're going to do is we will start off going by yesterday's perfect lineups, the winning lineups, then we will get into today's slate. Now, before we do all that, come join us at LineStar. We have a free seven-day trial. If you have never tried us before, go through the app stores, Android or iPhone, and you can get your free seven days. Try us out. Tell us what you think, what we can do better, what uh, you love, and we love to hear that feedback. As always, guys, appreciate you joining us. Now let's get into today's show. Get over to projections, and uh, the slate already did start for today, so I'm going to have to go to yesterday to check out those PLs, good old perfect lines. Another way for the perfect lineup, it is to say, would be the optimal, if you were confused by what we mean by perfect lineup, it is the best lineup you possibly could have had last night. And as always, there's a lot of one-offs in them. We do have a, a two-man Met stack. Uh, Hunter Brown got there. Jerks and Profar hit a grand slam. Uh, Judge hit a grand slam. Ventos hit two home runs. Uh, did Nemo hit a grand slam? I know he had nope three three base on three on base for his. Uh, so, anyways, just just quite a wild day. Three twenty nine, perfect lineup score. Just got there up there. And the winning lineup went to MZ Tosh, 120K, Hunter Brown, insanely chalky. He's been pitching great, and he did it again uh, yesterday. We're really seeing that uh, top prospect finally kind of show that ability. And then the lineup that won it is all one-offs. Now, DraftKings lineup was also all one-offs, I think. Just kind of a wild night yesterday. But look, we do this show every day and go over these every single day. This is not the type of lineup that wins. Meanwhile, probably about 40, 50, maybe 60% of the contests do lineups like this. So the field's lineups are mainly lineups like this, and we rarely see them win. So I just want to kind of hammer that home that while it happened today, and it obviously is going to happen a little bit with such a big portion of the field entering lineups that are all kind of one-offs or maybe just, you know, two-man correlations. It just doesn't win that often. So I just want to kind of preach that again, reiterate that. Somebody who was in the comments kind of bummed out, bummed that they lost again. Two one-off lineups, and hey, it happens. One lineup construction, one way cannot win every day, but you are you have a way better chance of success with correlation and with stacking than you do without. So uh, let's get into the DraftKings lineup now. Check that one out. As I said. It's another uncorrelated lineup, but uh, at least we can look at it and we can check out what uh, the perfect lineup was as well. So Hunter Brown, Bryce Wilson, then two-man Mets, and all one-offs from that. One of the things I do want to point out from the perfect lineup stuff, we always do have some sort of stack, and that will, you know, to win a contest you can lean more into the correlation than the perfect lineup shows. Trying to pick, you know, each hitter independently to go off is just an amazingly hard task. Um, as we see, 
the perfect lineup data. If we go to yesterday, it was a 12 game slate, 11 to 15 games here. 80% of the lineups have at least two teammates together. 100%, you know, two, two stacks teamed stacks is the way you win these. You don't win it by one offs. Uh, so just want to kind of reiterate that for everybody. Now, winning lineup on uh, good old DraftKings went to Anciete, who had Kyle Hendricks as the pitcher with Hunter Brown. Hendricks was somebody that uh, Ryan Humphreys talked about in his newsletter. Hunter Brown, we obviously both talked about, and he was insanely chalky. But adding uh, Hendricks with Brown definitely got you a little different. And Hendricks got there to uh, my surprise, even though he, you know, gave up two earned runs, didn't get the win. He just stayed in the game long enough, got enough K's, and pitching was a little rough yesterday. Then the winning lineup, uh, we had a two-man Cincinnati stack and then all one-offs. Uh if you notice, pretty much every one of his guys hit a home run outside of outside of uh, India, Alvarez, and EDLC. But India did have two stolen bases and had a huge game. Uh, one thing I do want to point out here is they won by 23 points. The guy in second had a five-man Pittsburgh stack and what, three one-offs there? So, just goes to show you, I mean, this person absolutely could have added more correlation to their lineup, made it a little easier to pick these guys, and uh, and won. I mean, he won by a huge margin. You know, he could have had, <laughs> he could have had a zero from Otani and still won. So, it, you might as he might as well have made it easier for himself. I'm not taking anything away from him. Congrats to him for winning. It is so hard to put this type of lineup together and win. So by all means, congrats. You did an amazing job. Uh, I just think you need more correlation. Make it easier on yourself. Instead of getting, you know, 10 things uh, right in your lineup, make it where you get four things right. And uh, I I would just rather do that than try and pick 10 one-off uh, people. Now, let's get into this slate. We got main slate. Starts at uh, 410 West Coast time. We do have five games. There is some weather in the Mets game and in the Red Sox game. So definitely try to watch that as we get a little bit closer. Now, pitchers, Cutter Crawford, pitching is hard today. Pitching is real tough. This is an ugly, ugly slate of pitching. 33% owned Cutter Crawford, 2.0x, 2.5 star alert score. Not seeing many smiley faces today, as uh, Unknown would like to say. But uh, look, he hasn't been great lately. 5.99 FIP. He does have a 3.67 FIP on, uh, over the last 20 starts, though. He's averaging 21% less fantasy points at home. There's nice hitting weather here. It's not a great spot for uh, Cutter Crawford. However, this Toronto team does not scare me that much either. 240 average, 138 ISO with a 304 WOBA over uh, the last 20 games to righty. So I don't mind going here. I do think he's a little high owned and I don't love going to the high ownership in a good hitting weather spot. However, pitching is rough today. And I think you're going to have to probably have a little bit of cutter Crawford. So, uh, one thing though, to note is team BB, uh, BVP is they have hit him well in the past. K rate 23% or combined K rate 23.6. He's in the player pool, but I don't love it. Um, that's just where we're at. Now, Luis Gill, he's the best pitcher on this slate, which isn't really saying much. He's the most expensive. He's 2K more expensive. 
He is our highest projected pitcher. He is also the consensus highest projected pitcher. But you're paying up for that big time. We only have him at 1.7x. The thing is, I do think his floor is the highest. He has that uh, strikeout upside. It's going to help him. He is 29% owned. Three uh, star alert score. 29% K rate over his last 20 starts. 3.81 FIP. 4.11 4.11 FIP over the last five, so he's been a little bit worse. His stack cast data is a little worrisome. Um, main thing here, just watch for weather. We have the little emoji saying 25% uh, chance of postponement here, so look at that as we come a little closer uh, to the slate to make sure you are in the clear here. I think you got to have some gill. Now, I do have to bring up the fact the Mets have been hot lately. 266 uh, average versus righties, 193 ISO with almost a 340 Woba. They have been hitting righties pretty well lately. So, I don't love trying to pick on the Mets in this spot, but it is the best pitcher. I think you have uh, the best chance of 20-plus points from any pitcher with uh, Lou Gill. And this is a spot that you may just need to bite the bullet and pay up could be not really sure yet sean Manaya versus the yankees nobody really wants to face the yankees let alone if you're a lefty 328 woba 173 iso the winds are blowing out 15 mile an hour uh he allows 42 percent hard contact 38 percent fly balls allowing a decent amount of barrel balls now he has been decent 3.8 FIP over his last 20 starts, 4.3 over his last five, 29.9% K rate. Combined K rate, 24.6 up 7.2K is a little interesting, 1.9X. Now, this is a spot that I very much want to play both sides. I think I need some Yankee stacks, but I think the Mets and Manaya has been pitching well enough that he could get through being this cheap today. So... I don't mind having a little bit. It's definitely a very scary spot, but Manaya can get it done, and this is just a scary slate for pitching. Next, uh, Simeon Woods Richardson, 2.0x, 6.9K, 14-point projection, or just shy of 14. He's a 3.99 FIP over his last 20, 4.38 over his last five. Does have a little bit of strikeout upside. We do have a 22% combined K rate at 6.9. So I am a little bit interested here. And Arizona versus righties just hasn't been that good. Now, got to bring this up like I did the other day. They have been much better in the short term. They have been hitting a little bit more like they did last year. 272 uh, average versus righties over the last 20 with 170 ISO, 344 WOBA. They've been hitting righties well. It's not a cake matchup, but unfortunately is still one of the better matchups on the slate. So uh, Woods Richardson is firmly in my player pool as well. Next, Gavin Stone. I think Gavin Stone is one of my favorite pitchers on this slate. If there's any other person that has a legit 20-point upside than Lou Gill, it is Gavin Stone. He's 8.8K. I'm super interested in him. White Sox lineup just doesn't scare me. I think his ownership is going to come up through the day because this is by far the best spot. He's also been pitching well. FIP of three over the last five, 24% K rate. Combined K rate, 24%. I'm intrigued. I'm going to try and get some more of him, uh, especially if he is at the ownership that we currently have him. Next, Eric Fetty. Uh... I, I actually have liked Fetty as a pitcher lately, but very scary spot for the Dodgers. I I don't love the spot, but he does have a little bit of upside at 7.7K. With pitching today, I'm not taking me out, him out of my pool. I'll probably get a little bit, but I won't very get very much. Yarrell Rodriguez, I'm not touching him. Ryan Nelson, I don't love the spot for him either. Definitely may stack against him. Hayden was new was Nesky. Uh, I wish he was cheaper. If he was cheaper, I would consider him. The fact though, is that he's probably limited to 60, 70 pitches and at 8.3 K, I can't get there. Libertor is in a similar situation. He went 48 last game as a starter and maybe he's around 70 ish today. I hard time getting there against that Braves team. 
Get it over to FanDuel. We'll check out pitchers here. Lou Gill is your highest owned pitcher at 33%, as he probably should be most likely to, uh, you know, get those Ks. I do think Gavin Stone should be higher owned. Uh, we do have him with a higher projection. Just the consensus is way lower on uh, on him. So I don't love uh you know, the fact consensus is so low, but hey, that's probably why his ownership is a little bit lower. But anyways, Lou Gill, firmly in my player pool. Sean Manai at 30% owned is a rough one for me to swallow versus the Yankees. So I may not have a ton of Manaya and may use some leverage Yankee stacks on FanDuel. However, I do got to say it is only a five-game slate, so pitching is going to be a little bit rough here on FanDuel for sure. Cutter Crawford, I think, is firmly in play here. The matchup uh, I do like, only bummer is that it's hitter-friendly park and in good hitting weather. But uh, Cutter, Stone, and Gill, clearly my three favorite options. We shouldn't have a problem you know, paying up for pitcher a little bit here. I would say that uh, Wood Richardson is absolutely in consideration for a couple lineups as well. Now, let's get over to DraftKings to get some stack attacks here. Highest value on the slate is going to the Boston versus Yarrell Rodriguez. I love this one. I think the floor for Boston is very high. If they hit some home runs, then this T, they become a very good ceiling play as well. Boston can go cheap. You can pay up for pitching. Rodriguez hasn't been good. 4.92 FIP. He's letting a lot of guys on base. I think you can definitely take advantage of that. Uh, St. Louis is likely against Elder, but we're still waiting for that confirmation. I think you can stack St. Louis Cardinals. Elder is solid, but it's going to be, you know, first start of the year or something like that. White Sox versus Gavin Stone. Don't really love that spot for them, but uh, there should be a little bit of leverage there because they are super low owned. And then Toronto versus Cutter Crawford is a little interesting. Cutter or Toronto does have some very, very good hitting weather in their favor. Now our highest uh projected stacks projected owned i should say highest owned stacks toronto and the dodgers now i don't love going to toronto i don't mind going to the dodgers uh but i do think fetty is a little bit better pitcher than the field is saying he is he has a fit before fit of 2.97 over the last five he's been pretty solid lately so I don't love trying to go with the Dodgers. Now the Dodgers can literally hit anybody. Uh, Yankees coming in a little higher owned. I like the Yankees stacks versus Manaya, but Manaya is a decent pitcher and can do decently as well. So I don't feel like I have to force it in, but I'm going to definitely get some. Now the highest projected stacks, we got Boston and the Dodgers. Those should both probably be the highest projected, so I am not that surprised by that. And then if we get into the highest ceiling stacks, we are going to see Boston and then the Mets and Dodgers. Mets one is interesting. Lou Gill is probably the better pitcher on this slate, but he has had some regression lately. So if you want to uh, keep leaning into that regression monster, then a Mets stack makes some sense, but I don't really love it. Now, uh, highest FIP over the last 20, Yarrell Rodriguez and Matthew Libator right under that. Uh, we didn't talk about the Braves stack. Braves is an interesting one. You can absolutely go there. Now, highest implied uh, run totals. We have Boston at 5.4, so 0. 0.6 higher than anybody else. I think Minnesota is firmly uh, in play for stacks here versus Ryan Nelson. It's in Arizona, pitcher, or hitter-friendly park. Nelson hasn't been great, high average exit velocity, and bullpen with a high whip. Very interested there. Also interested in Braves. Yankees' spot is very 
uh, intriguing. And then obviously the Dodgers are popping up. Another thing is uh, Wesnewski has 11.88 FIP over his last uh, five. So with that in consideration, maybe the Giants make some sense as well with a poor bullpen behind him. Now, one thing I got to say about the Giants is it is always a little hard going with a five-man stack versus them, especially when Wesnewski is likely only going to go three to five innings and you're going to get a big dose of the bullpen. So that just means more time for the Giants to platoon guys, play splits and whatnot, making it harder to stack five. So with Giants, I always lean more on two, three man stacks than going full five man. That'll do it for us today, guys. Hope you guys have great luck. Let's make some money. Let's hit this uh, slate hard. I will see you all tomorrow. I think we have a four or five, six man slate, something like that tomorrow. So I should be back even though it is a Thursday. Have a good one. Peace.